Well, my favourite scientist, as you might have seen, is Charles Darwin. However, I also have a different favourite scientist who, for a very different reason, for a more inspirational reason, and that would be Mr Spock from Star Trek. Well, when I say Mr Spock from Star Trek, I don't mean the actor Leonard Nimoy. I mean the character, the scientist from the future, the Vulcan scientist that was a scientific officer from Star Trek. Well, Mr. Spock is an alien on an Earth ship, so he's already an outsider then. What we know about Mr. Spock is he's quite dispassionate. He bases his theories not on emotion, but on evidence. He's very logical, he's very calculating. In other words, he's the archetype of a scientist. I believe Mr Spock is exactly what a scientist should be like. Unfortunately, not everybody is, but the best scientists base everything that they know on logic, on observation, on evidence, not on what they think the answer should be, but in deciding if the evidence supports what the version of the truth could possibly be. It's important to not dismiss instinct, but we have to judge instinct versus observation. In the Star Trek series, we have Captain Kirk, who believes in something, who will go forward, forward with something. But usually, he has Mr. Spock to guide him, to say, well, perhaps we ought to look at things a bit more carefully. Perhaps what we see at first sight isn't actually what's happening. Let's look at it stage by stage, and then we can come up with a plan of action based on that. So it's very good to have an instinct for what might possibly be the case at the first sight. But then I think we have to go into scientific observation to decide, is that actually right? Everyone knows who Mr. Spock is, whether you've set foot in a laboratory or not. Your parents know who Mr. Spock is. Your grandparents almost certainly know who Mr. Spock is. You probably know Mr. Spock if you're in Alaska, if you're in New Zealand, if you're in Zimbabwe, if you're in Bolivia. You've probably heard of Mr. Spock. And he has probably inspired more scientists in his short fictional life than the likes of Newton or Cuvier or Lamarck or Linnaeus, despite their contribution to science, Mr. Spock has probably inspired more people to turn to science and logic. He's a hero in, in the films, mm. but he's not someone you'd want to be like, is he? Everyone wants to be Captain Kirk. They don't want to be Mr. Spock, because yeah. Mr. Spock's <laughs> a bit boring. And Is he doing a disservice to science by being the boring straight man? I don't think so. Uh, hopefully I'm not boring myself, but I think he inspired myself and he inspired people from the 60s onwards to go more into this observational style of life that scientists could provide a lot. Yeah, he was someone who was not as adventurous, not as emotional as Captain Kirk. However, at the same time, he was a hero. He was someone that people could look up to, not simply for his logic and his lack of emotion, but for his knowledge and for the way that people relied on him for his uh, very real advice that he gave. Spock made science and knowledge something to, to aspire to. He was certainly heroic. He took decisions that would save people's lives. And that is really what a lot of science is about. It's saving lives, it's saving wildlife, it's saving the planet. It's using science to better humanity and its environment.
I do enjoy Star Trek. I'm probably not a die-hard fan, but yeah, I would say I've seen every episode of Star Trek, certainly all the ones with Spock in it.